Puff, two you know, people. I wouldn't say entirely two different people, mm -hmm. but one is a lot more grounded and a lot more, you know, um, understanding, understanding and genuine, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And whatever armor or defense system had to be established in order to preserve that person, that's the person I was inclined to talk to have the reunion gotcha. with. Because if it was Diddy, that means I'm coming as Loon. Right. Loon not coming to have no reunion with Diddy. You know, Amir's coming to have a reunion with Sean. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs>
Oh, yeah. Yo, we yeah, 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 acquainted yeah. with ourselves. We kind of course, figure out how course. to like. Right. We're teasers. We didn't know how to like. Yeah. yeah we we bullied. We like yeah, made so fun. Like, Damn, I still do you that. You could tap a girl. No. <laughs> she, she, you know, she, frog on your arm. Like, she don't even know it's strange. She uh, bang your joint crazy. You uh, like, yo. Why you hit me like, like that? Like, why you hit me like right, that? Right, right, right. playing. Like, you know what I'm right. saying? But that was just her responding to, she liked, you know. The, she liked with, you. Yeah, what you showed. So, you know I, I just want to be clear. Loon and Low. Uh, a quake getting punched in the arm to somebody taking off their fit. <laughs> no, that, no. I that's know, how, no, that's, that's, how, how, he that's how he broke it down yeah, to me. No, I, I understood yeah, it. Now I was trying to soften it up. No, I, yeah, I, I was embarrassed. But he, I took, but he took his hat off. He yeah, definitely yeah. did. He, he, he took it off and he was like, cool. right? I look, I'm, I look, I look good, good, right? Listen, low. Then, hold up, but then he hammered himself. For no reason. <laughs> you, no ain't reason. Tell, so you ain't tell me okay, that. Hold up, but I told you. Yo, that may not be what they see. See, he admit he immediately started to address his own you know, imperfections, mm -hmm. deficiencies, mm -hmm. and so forth. But nobody see that. <laughs> You're just projecting something that you may be struggling that with. That I feel, yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, you know, people today, they'll shock you. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I, I learned to just be patient. You know I, I love Lil being with... your, your life coach right now, bro. Bro, like, he's giving me, <laughs> oh, he's giving me the other side of the pillow. Oh, so yeah. I had, nah, like, I had, to, I had to sit back I mean, and He like... told me he had went to the Mary joint. Now, y'all know I'm out the loop of a lot of things. Like, yeah. Right, right. Get my disclaimer. I haven't okay. listened to music in 13 years. You know what I'm saying? So, I remember you telling us this. Yeah, so time. I'm yeah. really out of the loop. Okay. Do I still know a lot of people from my generation? Absolutely. I love... And, and learn to appreciate experiences I had with a lot of people in the industry. And mm -hmm. I try to maintain those ties because these were people that I shared a certain level of adversity with, mm -hmm. you know. But he said he was at the Mary joint, yes. right? He was like first a student at Buddha, my too, that, <laughs> First thing that comes to my mind, this is, a, this is a grown affair. Of course. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So the hat might not have been a good look. It definitely was you know not a good look. I, just, I, got, just, I, got, I got the cut. Just judging yeah. from Lowe's fit alone, because you got to remember. <laughs> all right, so I don't know if you you weren't there. So Rosie was hitting us with the FaceTime, and Rosie is good for a random FaceTime. Random. Right? I pick up. <laughs> Lowe picks up. And if you know Lowe, and if you listen to this show... <laughs> You know getting low to either put on a button-up shirt or go out without a fitted. Or jeans. Just or jeans. <laughs> it's a battle they were that nobody they wants jeans. to fight. They because were, they were low, fitted khakis. Low, low will fight you tooth and nail. Why are we on group FaceTime <laughs> low? He going to have not just the button-up. He got like the official all white. The like, to the all the way to the tippity top. Hold on. Fresh, clean, baldy. Yeah. The last button. The last button. The last, the last, yeah. Like he looked like a he looked like a, a, a he had samurai low key. LA button up. It was it, yeah yes yes yeah. Not gonna yeah. hold you. It was a clean fit. And then we see a gold ceiling, and we're like, where is? Yeah, it? I'm and like, he hangs up. Yeah. And I, I see you know. on Instagram. I see the big picture, Mary J. Nah, yeah. Apple it, music. It, it, I'm it like, was, oh, okay. It was the work event. Yeah. You know? Mary was like, you ain't bringing that fit up in here, mo. Nah, Mary, <laughs> Mary. Mary ran through her hits last night. You know, Apple Music has this thing called Apple Music Live. Mm -hmm. I went to LA last month. Lil Dirk did it, nice. and this month is is Mary Jane, and it actually comes out July 29th. Mm. But they they filmed it last night. Fat Joe was there. Kevin Lyle. She ran through pretty much every hit that we all know and love. Nice. It was just. Yeah, so, shout out to Mary. Yeah, she man. shout out Mary. Killed shout out Apple that. Music doing those incredible Apple Killed Music lives. That That's fire. Killed that shit. So, survivor, so yeah, I had yeah, I was I was tightened up. You mm -hmm. know, went to dinner. You know, had the the clean khakis on and yeah. all this other stuff so yeah that that that's why i look like how i look like so lo i'm i'm assuming you've been to to, to some mary functions before or been around mary j blige and you know i didn't it looked like it looked like it was one of those fancy hoity toity joints cuz i see your instagram story was very quiet yeah. <laughs> but no, no, it was but like, no, no, but the only reason why I couldn't do it because it's like it was a work event, so I can't, I couldn't really. I know, I know, I'm just yeah, okay. Okay. It's okay. <laughs> well, well, tell me, tell me, do you have any Mary stories or just like, you know, being around her, working with her? I know you, y'all, you know, you must well, have run in the same circles. At right? one time, we had the same manager. Oh, wow. You know, it, it was a time when she was being managed by Kurt Burroughs. And okay. Kurt was managing me at the time when she did the Mary album, which happened to have been at the time one of my favorite. All time oh, still Mary one of my albums. favorites. One yeah, of my favorite all time Mary albums, and you know we came across each other quite a few times, of course, because you know me being a bad boy and her always being an extended, yeah, single immediate, family. yeah, immediate extended relative. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, a bad boy was like she always 
was consistent in her character. She mm. was always the same person. Mm -hmm. So I can imagine now just catching a glimpse of how she's evolved to who she is today. I can imagine you yeah. know, the, just the magnitude of, you know, just excellence, maturity, you know, saying all the things that we aspire to be. Or I think you know? the illest thing about Mary was something that happened super recently mm -hmm. was, uh, you know, she won a BET award for like best uh, R&B album, right? And people could say what they want about BET awards and how they feel about it. But the year before that, no, they gave you her... You can say whatever you want about Oh, yeah, we already, know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we already know how you yeah, We already know. The BET brunch is out. We already yeah. Next year. If you, wa yeah. <laughs> if you watch the show, you know how he feels about this but, show. Um, the, but the year before, they gave her a Lifetime Achievement Award. Mm -hmm. And usually when you get a Lifetime Achievement Award, that's like, you know, basically saying, no, thanks for everything, but, yeah. you know, we're not really expecting anything new from you. Yeah. So that was the first thing she said when she got her award. She was like, yo, man, like, you know, I know this, this means a lot to me because last year, you know, I'm grateful for the Lifetime Achievement Award, but that's basically y'all saying I was done. Yeah. And like, clearly I'm not, you know what I'm saying? Right. So like, you speaking to that and, and, and that sort of energy and elegance that she continues to have is... Uh, is and, and, and like, and to his point, and not, you know, not to give too much away about the concert last night, but like, to his point, like, yo, bro, like, she, you would think this is 96, 97. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> she's out there doing the dance moves, like, talking <laughs> through records, talking her shit. Rhyming through records, like the vocals are still there, the energy was still there. She captivated the crowd, had everybody in the palm of her hands, and you would think that, that bro, this is '98. <laughs> this is like my life. This mm -hmm. is like what's the four one one? Like, just seamless. Yeah. And like she wrote these records yesterday. Yeah. Like she just put these albums out yesterday. Like it was just. I love hit to see that. Hit after I love hit after hit. I love seeing just the music we grew up on. Hip hop, RB. I love getting old with it. I love that it's out. It's out. And old. still being fresh, and it still feels fresh. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Um, still, you know, still maintaining your identity. That's yeah. Like, mm. you know, because being in that business, you know, a lot of us coming from these inner cities, mm. aspiring to be great, mm. whether it be sports, entertainment, whatever it is, mm. we never prepare past the stoop. Right. We don't plan past the stoop. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like sitting on the stoop, we have very Short, you know what I'm saying? The windows. Ask, yeah, very, very, very real short. It's like, yeah. get moms out the projects. Yeah. You know, help such and such. Do you used to look out. And once you accomplish that, a lot of times, you know. You you're good. Lost. You're just like, yeah. Yeah, like you don't, there's no, like, there's no plan good, after you, that. Yeah, there's no plan after that. Right. So now you just end up becoming the recipient of everything that comes with the game now. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So like to see Mary, Alicia Keys, somebody else I knew for eons, you know, mm -hmm. these people persevere and become these 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 iconic figures based on their character and who they are as a yeah. person. Mm. You know what I'm saying? We can always reflect on, you know, the talent. And the music. You know what I'm saying? But for me, what survives when I look at many of the people that, you know, <clears throat> I frequent with when I was in the business is like, who are they now? Yeah. You know, who have you, you know, became today? And when you see that that integrity, that that you know, all those things magnified. Yeah, it's like those are things I appreciate. Do you, no, speak do you, of, you speaking speaking of which, man? Do you think you were in that in that in that pot of 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 the stoop and not understanding what was next or what was coming next or not being prepared for what? To was be next? honest, you know, I've always had very very broad, you know, aspirations and ambition, mm -hmm. you know. I grew up, you know, exposed to a lot of things. You know what I'm saying? My mother and father, you know what I'm saying? They ran with Nicky Barnes. My grandfather was tight with Bumpy Johnson. Like, mm -hmm. I'm really a product of Harlem. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Generation, you know what I'm saying? And my godfather, George Jackson, you know what I'm saying? He passed away in 2000. He produced Crush Groove, you know, Disorderly, New Jack City. So he actually contributed a lot to the, you know, the culture as well. And I went to Beverly Hills High School. You know oh, wow. Saying? Yeah, I was classmates with Angelina Jolie. Mm -hmm. So, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, these are the things that, and I'm giving away a lot of stuff in my documentary. Like, <laughs> like, a lot of stuff people- This is the preview. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so it's like being exposed to those things give you range. Yeah. Opposed to somebody that just may be, you know, you know, uh, subjected to a small area or small, you know what I'm saying? kind of box. Mm -hmm. I, I know so many people in Harlem who growing up, they were like, they've never been to Times Square. Yeah. They've never been to the city. Yeah. Like they've only been like 
literally within the four blocks. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and and it's wild to me because you say that to somebody. I mean, you know, this is a very New York heavy podcast, but like, picture pe- people who don't live in New York. That is not a far drive, man. That's literally saying like I've never been down the street. Yeah. If you live in like on one twenty fifth and seventh, like you you literally have never been forty blocks down from where you live. Yeah. I can tell you the upside it. of that though, is you gotta look at how diverse New York is in itself. Yeah. So even if you stayed in your borough, let's say Manhattan, for example, yeah. you got a smorgasbord of different cultures. Oh, it's the ethnicity. only city. Yeah. It's yeah. the only city like you know that. You know what I'm saying? This this will have you passport ready. Like if you <laughs> yeah. really if you really absorb New York, mm. you know what I'm saying? Like we were talking earlier, she grew up in the Heights. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You got you know, you, this this is Latin fest. You got Dominicans, Puerto Ricans, you got some Panamanians up there. You might even have some Cubans mm. sprinkled in there sprinkled somewhere. In there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that's what you got going on. You got little Italy, you got Chinatown, you got Koreatown, you got West Africans, you got, you know what I'm saying? You yeah. got Yemenis, you got Lebanese, you, got, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, those are the things that always, you know, inspire me to want to explore right so even growing up in harlem like people that know me in harlem i was in every borough i knew dudes in the bronx brooklyn queens like i'm all over the place you mm. know what i'm saying i i never subjected myself just to harlem but i grew up with dudes like you said got seven cases on the same block since we was kids been catching a case on that same block mm. every time five wow. years come back next case on that same block it's almost like you know it's a bed waiting for you there's like you know after like third time it's like look we just gonna keep your joint mm. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna keep, keep it yeah, we're gonna keep your joint fluffed up, pillow yeah. <laughs> You know, it's like right taking it into a whole time. Like, oh, <laughs> exactly. Back here, that's just it. Yeah. 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 Got your room for you. Word. Yeah. And it's crazy because they come on like, the, yo, man, yo, I got, yo, dude, why you think you got caught? Like, you in the same the same spot, place you know, you've same always been. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, and I, and I, and that's and, I, and I, to me, I always looked at that as fear. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people comfortable in the element. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You take them out of the element, you'll find out who a person really is. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And I always thought that you can apply New York anywhere in the globe. Oh, oh yeah. Really yeah. officially yeah. from New York, you can apply. You can maneuver, you navigate. I had Marshall. never been to London in my life, and I took I was taking the train out there. Yeah. I'm like, well, yeah, but that's ain't new. Yeah. But, that, but, that, but that's also <laughs> but you. Saying, like I've you never are been to London, but so you I'm are like, let me figure this out. Yeah. You always but you always have that mentality of figuring shit out. Like no matter what it is, like I've I've known you for about what, 10, 12 years. So I've always seen you navigate through shit. So like you going to London or wherever fuck you go, you always just be like, all right, cool, like <laughs> Whatever, like I'll, I'll get Let me it. Google going. where I want to go and figure yeah. it out. And that's that. I think that's just like I think that's the quality that New Yorkers have in general, right? Yeah. Like there's like maybe five or six cities I, I, I've ever been to that say, has that same sort of quality yeah. of you know you get a, a little bit of everybody. Like Toronto's like that, mm-hmm. San Francisco's yeah. like that. Mm-hmm. I've never been to London, but I'm assuming London or Paris are like UK's that. Like that yeah. London is. But, London, I lived in London for yeah. like eight months. Yeah, like London got York. We live in New York. Oh wow! Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're like, we're, we're like, you know, yeah. the bastard child of London. Uh huh. You know what I'm saying? So even like, like she said, it's like a they call it the tube, but it's the train. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. We call it the streets. They call it the roads. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, it's you know, the same you know, thing. It's all the same thing. Everything, you know, they, in, in 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 English slang. Because I remember the first time I think I went to London was like 2005. It's when I was in music business. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But then when I went back as a Muslim, it was like it was a whole different experience because they actually have one of the most vast Muslim population in the Western Hemisphere, mm, like wow. in, in London. They actually got a Muslim mayor, all kinds of stuff. So it's like, it's different. But to what she said is like, we have this willingness to, this fearlessness too, you know, to venture off of the touristic grid. Of course. A lot of people, they go places and it's like they following the brochure. Yeah. What did you guys say, say in the, in the say, travel, in the travel yeah. episode? It's like, who does that? I like to party yeah. with locals. Yeah, I like, like to see who the locals are. They say in the I'm not pocket. flying 15 hours to go to McDonald's. Of Me either. Yeah, yeah, I feel <laughs> like it's a waste of trip. I want yeah. local food. Exactly. I want a street yeah. car. Even their hands, I'm eating my hands. Even their feet, I'm eating my feet. I'm doing yeah, what right. the people do. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like, I want to enjoy. I could have been Anthony Bourdain. I tell you. Man, I watched his documentary that they put out on, I think, on HBO Max or whatever. Man, that dude's life, bro. Like, even even knowing like how tragically it ends up, you you just look at it like, can't act that like he fun. ain't lived. Yeah, <laughs> <that was fun. laughs> like, even like fun. knowing how it ended, it's like, 
Yeah, that seems like a pretty good way. <laughs> like if that's if that's the way you like, going, he went out like that. But like, but, yo, you still had the time of your life, bro. I can't say that. You can't I'd like say you did. Figure out the locals, cause that's that's what it really is. Like, you yeah, what, what it really is. And I did that. And on a small part of you, I think you know, especially people from this city, I think a small part of you kind of feels a little bit like you don't want to cheat the people too, right? Yeah. Like a lot of times, at least a lot of people I know. Um, when you go into another city, you never want to feel like you're taking advantage of mm -hmm. the people there, right? Like, I know when I go, like, if I'm ever on vacation, like, if you either just stay on a resort, like, I mean, there's nothing wrong with just staying on a resort. Yeah. But, like, a lot of times, like, a lot of people that work there or live there, like, that's that's not where they vacation. Like, that's yeah, where they yeah. live, you know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. pretty sure it's not as nice, you know, a block away from the fancy hotel right, right. that it is. So I think, you know... Like what Rosie does, a lot of New Yorkers do, like that innate ability to just kind of like connect with people really on the ground floor mm -hmm. to yeah. really feel like you got the travels worth. You know what I mean? Like it's I mean, I, I'm saying I was blessed, man, the 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 actually visit six continents. Which continents? It's only seven. <laughs> like, oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, the other one. Yeah, okay. yeah. Right. There's only one you can't visit. It's all good. I'm like, I do that. You can't visit, that. but no one wants to go. Like, no one wants to go to Antarctica. I'm yeah. about to say, which one? Yeah, which one did you? Bro, that might have been the top five dumbest yeah, responses I've ever given. Yeah. 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 With a smile too. You know, only seven. Only seven. Yeah, yeah. Anytime you watch, anytime you watch, are you smarter than a fifth grader? And you're like, man, that don't happen to real people. <laughs> that just happened to me just now. <laughs> which one? Which one you think? That was just only seven. <laughs> that was excitement. I, I, I'm not going to deem you to be oblivious to the fact that there's only seven countries. I'm going to just say that was exciting. I appreciate that. Well, it's, it's, I appreciate you letting yeah. me live on that. But you, you got to travel uh, to all six yeah. of these continents. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm going to tell you really? what was so important about... I didn't even cut you off. No, what ahead. was so important to me about traveling... I was this way when I was a kid. Like, okay. I was in love with history, social studies. Like These are my favorite subjects. Now, before you continue, is this mm -hmm. is this... During the industry you've been traveling or, or, is, or after, like as you well, became Muslim? I started off doing the traveling that we deem to be travel in the United States. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So already, already, after already, you tour the United States, it's like you're ready for the world. Okay. Right. okay. So like I was telling her before, not to, you know, glorify, even disclose anything, you know, about my past. But, you know, before music, I toured different ways. You know okay. What I'm yeah. Yeah. And. Those were things that we were known for in New York. Mm -hmm. Like we mm -hmm. pop up in anybody town. Like we be in anybody <laughs> right. town, mm -hmm. putting it down the way we put it down. Right. But like once you exhaust that, then you're ready for like the world. Yeah. So I'm gonna tell you what it is for me. And I experienced the value of it later in prison. I'm gonna tell you what I mean. It's like where we come from is always the same story. You know what I'm saying? It's a dude who had a five year run. You know what I'm saying? Bought five cars, had five million dollars, <laughs> went to jail for 55 years, right? Damn. So we I'm just saying it like this this story is repetitive. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I've always believed that if I'ma be stripped of anything, living this lifestyle that I choose, I know the one thing they can't take away is my worldly experiences. Mm. Can't take that away. You know what I'm saying? And that was something I aspired to do as a as a as a youth before I even knew the real, real value of it. It was more of a desire, but then I learned later it was a value. Fast forward, I'm in prison. Now in prison, you could be whoever you want. Everybody's in there, somebody or not. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Yo, come on, I'm trying to tell you. Like, dude to tell you his money in the Brinks truck, it really was in the shoebox. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> he tell you, like, he had a Bentley, he really had a cord. You know uh -huh. It's like, but you could be whoever you want. You know what I'm saying? It's your story. <laughs> then you got dudes that be pulling out their photo albums and stuff like that. And every now and then somebody would try me like to chime me in. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It, it never it never it was always respect. I always got respect, you know what I'm saying? Cause I I I I give respect, so right. respect me. Right. But it was like sometimes it's like, you know, dude, like, yeah, you know, got the one number. I was out there, yeah, like, yeah. I'd be looking at it, it's like, I don't want to hurt your feelings. Yeah, you know right. yeah. 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 I know the like, truth. Right. Yeah, you know. And it's nothing to it's nothing you want to glorify anymore. Exactly. Right. But the thing is, that was the trophy. You know, and that and that's what actually kept me at a state of not allowing, you know, prison to you know consume you. Mm -hmm. You know, because you hear the statement, "Yo, do the time, don't let the time do you," and that's a reality. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying this is I've seen mental illness firsthand, and it comes from just a repetitive cycle of being in an environment where everything is kind of like a hamster wheel. Right, you know what I'm right, saying? Right. So. 
to my point, it's like I used to look at people and how they had this commonality as far as like their story. I did this for a short period of time. I achieved this much, but the conclusion is I'm gonna be here for the rest of my life. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Or the cl- conclusion is I'm gonna be here for 30 years. When mm-hmm. I get out, it's gonna be 2045. Like, like, when you hear this type of it, stuff, it, like, yeah. it don't really hit you until you end there. We right. know people all the time. Like, all of us grew up knowing somebody that always has that who just, story, yeah, just yeah. disappeared. Right. Mm-hmm. When you see him in a long time, he right. come back, it's like you only recognize him, yeah, whatever yeah, yeah. the case may be. But to have those worldly experiences is something that you don't have to have in a portfolio. You don't yeah. have to go That's, through. It's here. Yeah, it's here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. here. Yeah. yeah. This is where it really resides. You know do you do you equate your yeah. your worldly travels with you know finding you know uh, your religion? Absolutely, absolutely. That was and it's crazy. You know, and I'm I'm, I'm, wanna, I'm glad you said that because. Mm. People just kind of like, yo, you disappeared. Yeah, like if you ask anybody, I mean, we did we did a Puff Daddy episode a few days ago, and you know, if you ask anybody, it's like, oh, you know, it's people people who work with Puff or did songs of Puff, they go and find religion for some reason. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like they get lost and then they come back and then I was you like, know, what's happening at Bad Boy? Yeah, right. I remember the, I remember the first time you popped up yeah. and you had the beard and you had everything yeah. on. I was like, oh wow. What? But the thing is, I think anybody that faces immense adversity, mm. you go back to your natural disposition. Mm. The natural disposition is you already have an understanding of who your creator is. That's why you instinctively look up. Yeah. You don't look under cars. When you look for God, you look up. Yeah. Instinctively. Nobody has to teach you that. You know what I'm saying? That's never been taught. It's never been taught. That's because like it's, it's, it's a mercy from your Lord that he created you to know where Thank he you, is. Bro. And he's only up here. The most high. You call him the most high. So right, he right. has to be above everything created. Right. Right? So with that being said, anyone that faces any type of adversity... And you run through your roller decks from A to Z, no help there. Relatives from grandma down, no help there. You instinctively just turn to the one who's always been able to aid you, always mm. been there to aid you. You know what I'm saying? You just haven't identified with some of the mercies you receive mm. because you, you know, you 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 equate that into being something that was an extension of someone else's hand, and so on and so forth. Right. So when people like used to give that to Puff or give that to the bad boy experience. I was like, nah, I mean, I think anybody that goes through something tries to find some tranquility in their life or some ease outside of the problem, Mm -hmm. whatever the problem may be. Not just bad boy, anything you're going through, right? Mm -hmm. Anything in life. So for me, when I left bad boy, I left with this young, fiery, I'm a a show. I'm a show him. Not even him. I'm going to show... The world. Because yeah. it's like... We were talking about it earlier how, you know, you can easily get overshadowed when you're yeah. partners with someone yeah. who has this immense influence and impact on the culture. And they have this strong presence that just radiates of, you know, all kinds of things that you aspire to be, you know? And you get caught up in that. Being a part of it is a plus. Yeah. When you're but on the outside, there's circumstances, yeah. there's there's the conditions, perception. there's consequences yeah, yeah, yeah. that come along with that. Right. And navigating through that is going to be difficult for anybody. It doesn't have to just be Puff. It could be Rockefeller. It could be Cash could be Money. Herb, it could be, be Hope, yeah. It could, it could be, be any yeah, yeah. major. You know what I'm saying? Conglomerate. conglomerate yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I feel like we see that with a lot of artists. You know, like you know, I, we I know we see that with. You're talking about it could be Hove, it could be you know a lot of people like we see a lot of people in, in, in the old Rockefeller that kind of like you know struggle not struggle but like you know life outside of that light of you know somebody that influential and that dim, successful you know? gets very yeah. dim. You know what I mean? So for me, like I said, I was trying to I was actually on a mission to challenge myself uh-huh. first and foremost, and then prove to myself first and foremost that. I had a value in all of this. Mm. And I don't think it was unnoticed. It's just that as an individual, it's like... For you. I, I think I deserve just everything to come right back to his owner. Like, yeah. I needed to you return back to his owner. The self-validation almost? Yeah, exactly. Okay. And I don't know if that could be equated into arrogance or anything or whatever. I, I mean, 
I, I don't know. I beg to differ because I, I I don't think I was an arrogant person. Right. I just think I was a person who you knew you deserved more. Yeah, I deserve. I deserve. I wouldn't say more, but I deserve. You know, to be the recipient of whatever I put. You whatever know, you put out, whatever I put it should out, be given it should back. Come right now, do you do you mean that in? Do you mean that spiritually? Do you mean that creatively? Do you mean that with your music? At the time, at the time? I thought. I, I, I believe that it was anything, yeah. any effort that was put forth for my embedment, for me, Should've given and my given family back. and the people that I'm entrusted with, it shouldn't have to get distributed or allocated in different directions. It mm -hmm. should come straight to me. To me. Yeah, mm -hmm. I see. So while I was on that journey, I kept bumping into Islam. I wasn't looking for Islam. Mm. You know it saying? came to you. It came, yeah. You know what I'm mm. saying? Because... <clears throat> There's a statement of you know the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He said, Min yahdi Allahu fala mudalala, wa min yulil fala hadi Allah. Whomsoever Allah chooses to guide, no one can lead them astray. And whomsoever Allah leads astray, no one can guide. So this is something that's understood whether you identify with Allah, God in the, you know, in a general sense or however, mm. you know that He's the facilitator of our affairs. Mm. So if he choose guidance for you, it's not going to miss you. Mm. But if he choose for you to go astray based on your desires and everything that takes you in that direction, he'll leave you to it. You know what right. I'm saying? So for me, I was looking for something. I was looking for something that was going to rectify all of the things I was feeling, all of the things I had experienced. And I was just looking in the wrong place, but found it, you know. So long story short, <clears throat> I went to Senegal. Mm -hmm. And I, I had a little show, you know, walk through a party, all that out in Senegal. So my day off, I went to visit Gory Island. I don't know if you know who Gory Island is. It's the first slave house is built in Senegal. So when I went to Gory Island and I visited the slave houses, <clears throat> they have like this kind of, Sea World tour guide dude. I didn't want to mess with him. I felt like what took place here, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like what happened here, I need somebody that I need somebody who like really knows yeah. somebody that's a reflection of what happened. Oh, right, 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 right. And Hamdulillah, it was a dude just standing on the side and he just looked like he he, he, he was knew there what for it me. was. Yeah, like, right. Yeah. Like it was almost like some, you know, like 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 someone heard me. Mm. Like someone called you yeah, there. Like I and ran he was down there on him, you. like, yo, yeah. you know about this place? Absolutely. No, hold on. For, just <clears throat> just describe what the first guy looked like to me real quick. The first guy he had on, he have a button up, but he did. Have <laughs> <laughs> what made you, say, what made you see him act. and be like, no. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> yeah it's because like... it was like what took place there was so <laughs> graphic and so impactful. You didn't want to whitewash. That he had this job interview voice. It was just like, and over here, it was like, oh, no. Nah. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. You nah, can't I'm tell me. I, I'm not going to allow you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm not yeah. going to allow you to teach me anything about what? my history yeah. right. with, that with that tone. With that tone. With that shirt, <laughs> with those slacks, you know what I'm saying? I feel like, I there's, an under, I feel like there's an undertone coming right back. No, 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 no. I'm just saying, like, like this is this so is when you go to college and you go to study African studies and, and like, like something no. like, well, today we're gonna learn about yeah. that. Like, like, oh, <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's even if someone was trying to teach you Spanish, right? Like, yes, you know. Exactly. So, with that being said, like I said, I gravitated to this guy. We waited to the whole, you know, get along game moved out the way because it was mm -hmm. a lot of, it was a very, it was, you know, it was a variety of different people. Right. You know, it was a lot of, you know, pro, you know, probably like Dutch people, the white, you know, it was, people come through. They just, you don't know, they all got different reasons. Okay, I'm probably right. guilt. Like I, I just got to go see <laughs> what my great grandfather did. Here, you know what I'm saying? Or it might have been some people there with just no, bro. To, like he, no, he's not wrong, and I didn't mean to cut you off because yeah. I went to the African American of uh, the, the museum in D.C. Yeah, and. All the white people in there, I'm just looking like, y'all. What you doing? Yo, why are you doing here? Like, you yo. not here, like, yeah. you, you know like, the story. What are you doing here? Like, you know what the fuck yeah. happened. Yeah. Like, but that's what I'm saying. Yeah, like, but that's that's beautiful though because Hennessy celebrates those who never stop and never settle in their never ending pursuit of greatness. Maurice Ashley lives his passion through his love of chess. He made history in 1999 as the world's first black grandmaster. An inspiring story of intellect and brilliance, his ability to push through the potential of his own mind to new levels of greatness is universally inspiring. 
Visit Hennessy.com to learn more about Maurice Ashley. In the world of the mind, there are no limits. Hennessy, never stop, never settle. We are so, like, immersed in that experience. Mm -hmm. We don't allow other people to experience it or other people to have a takeaway as well. Mm -hmm. You know, so, like I said, for me, you know, when the guy took me on the tour, it was very emotional. Because he's explaining things from a way more, you know, genuine articulate, and authentic, you know, genuine. Yeah, yeah. But who, and who was the guy? I, I was just never. I, I don't think I've ever seen. I would never see him again. I probably will never see him again. I think he was there for that particular reason. Just to yeah, he was a Muslim, and basically, the the the, the houses that was directly across from the slave house became residence. Mm. But that used to be where the um, captain and his crew lived and it was directly across from where they housed all the oh, slaves okay. Okay. okay so it ended up being inherited by you know the inhab inhabitants of that land gotcha. so you know basically I, I see all of this i mean i'm going through everything it's just like it's emotional as you get way more emotional way more emotional and he told me 60 million slaves passed through here he said but six million never left the soil they fought and they died right here. So, you know, I'm from Harlem. I'm, I'm kind of ignorant. I'm a rapper. I'm, I'm like, it must have been some real, you know, N I G G A. Yeah, yeah. And he like, he like, no, 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 I won't. they were Muslim. Yeah. I'm just boggled. Like, what is that? He said, no, nah, they would not submit to no one other than Allah or submit to no one other than God. Mm -hmm. And they fought and they died. He said, the ones that were weakened, you know, saying from that, you know, that assertment, that attempt, they were the ones who were sold into slavery. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So immediately that stripped me of nationalism. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That was the first layer that came off. Of, okay, I understand the first man that made the shoe, the first black man that made, you know, all those things is what we used to hold on to, mm, to right. build some kind of dignity, sense of belonging, and so on and so forth. But this man just like, told me something that surpassed that. Right. Uh, you know what I'm saying? This had nothing to do with the oppressive state of the transatlantic slave trade. This had everything to do with the people who stood on something, you know what I'm saying, that was directly connected to their creator. Mm -hmm. And they died for that. So when you think about all of the senseless deaths that we've had in our communities, all across, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. United States, it's like, we died for nothing. You know and they dying for something. They died for something. Yeah, we're all gonna go. Way more praiseworthy, yeah. you know what I'm saying, way more honorable, so on and so forth. So that was the first layer. And that joint just remained etched because it was just like, wow, who'd have thought? I came here to do all kinds of stuff that is dead wrong. You know, right. drinking, smoking. Yeah. Okay, I'm doing any country I go to, that's what I was on. <laughs> so it was like to have that experience, it was like it, it reset your yeah, mindset. It reset me. Yeah. So even when I got to the next spot, I still was kind of warped. Like, man. But the next spot was Kazakhstan. You know what I'm saying? I, me and Mario Wanders went out there. I was a guest of the president. We was a guest of the president for like nine nine days. Mm -hmm. I mean, they laid it out for us. And you know, they're descendants of like Mongolians. Mm -hmm. So they have like Russian genetics, Asian, you know, Asian features. And so I remember when one of the last shows we did, you know, we, we back there blowing and yeah. I'm like, yo, let me ask you a question. I used to, I, I used to always try to, you know, see, I used to try to always, yeah, yeah I used to always try to. I love to say it like, sounds, yeah, sounds I used, familiar. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, yeah. So I used to try to pick up a little language everywhere I go. So I'm like, right. let me ask you a question. Like, yo, when you see somebody, how you say, what's up? He like, salam alaikum. I'm like, I'm like, nah, that's what the Muslims say. He like, nah, we Muslims. Mm. So now that was adversity. Yeah. Because you know where we from. Right. Yemeni dude, mm -hmm. corner store, mm -hmm. Pakistani, mm -hmm. pharmacy, Bodega, West African, yeah, right. cab driver. Right. That's all we know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We way out here. You mean you telling me y'all out here too? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey. But I'm not knowing this because I'm on this mission, like I told y'all, to try to salvage and, and, and you know, and reestablish all this. So everything is resetting in your everything head. Everything is like, oh, shit. happening to me. So that's what he's saying. It was coming to him. Yeah, it was yeah, coming yeah, yeah, to me. Yeah, yeah. And it's yeah. contrary to what I was looking for. So last but not least, I went to the UAE. I went to Dubai. And I remember when my road manager, she was booking the joint. She like, yo, you trying to go out there? I'm like, nah, I ain't going out there. 
She's like, you sure? I'm like, yo, they trying to. I said, man, all money ain't good money. I seen mm-hmm. those people. I, mm-hmm. I go in the I go in the Yemeni store. They got five year old. He got an AK. I ain't going out there. I'm I'm I'm, I'm thinking like, what's propagated? Right. You understand? And everybody's today is a victim of that. Of like course. We, we pro, you know, you see propagation of what Adams are like. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it was it was rough, especially after 2001. Absolutely. After 9 11 happened, yeah. Yeah. everything on TV was super. So much accepted anti-Muslim rhetoric yeah. that but went on. But I think on. it impacted other places besides New York. I think we knew better, right? Because I ain't gonna lie, even like when all that happened, we in my. I think New York, we, we knew better. I think, them. yeah, I think yeah. New York, we kind of banded yeah. together. Yeah. I'm just thinking of yeah, what was like bro- they've been here. Like, we know, we what was broadcast yeah, on, like my on dentist, media? We talking about he's Muslim. My yeah. favorite cab driver. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? The like when I go in the Yemeni store, I'm short on Pampers. He look out and throw me a loose cigarette. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna be hard for me. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? They accept this new anger. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So when I went, when I finally caved in and went, I'm like, yo, this ain't nothing like what I seen on the news. What's going on in America? Yeah, these dudes yeah. on the news got turbans, AK, everybody <laughs> on, you know, on the joint. Right. I'm talking about beautiful. Everybody smell good. Well, we all see it now on TV. Yeah. They got, now, they got now, real now, now, it's good. Now, now, now it's great. Yeah. They got real housewives in Dubai. My, my wife was just watching that before I yeah. left. And that... Definitely wouldn't have happened something 20 years ago, you know what I mean? Because that's all we saw on TV. Because like you go to Hawaii, they they throw the, you know, it's like aloha. Now you got dudes going to Dubai, not even Muslim, but they want to dress like the Muslim. They want to, they want to respect. You got to respect the culture. Everything, you know, to come with it. Which is not really necessary, but it's like that shows that, you know, that respect. It is for women, though. It shows how much reverence. I feel like it is for women. Yeah, I think women don't, even like the men will go and throw it on too, right? But, you know, I think it just speaks for how much reverence that they hold for their own home. And, you know, I think, and I don't want to, you know, take what you're saying, but I think what you're alluding to is that that self, that sense of self worth and pride in where they come from, juxtaposed to what was being shown to you in America, was like, all right, this is the third it's a thing. 180 yeah. flip. Exactly. Yeah. And overall, it's just the blatant truth. You're mm-hmm. facing something that is being withheld from you like everything else. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like truth in itself has always been withheld from us. Mm-hmm. Always. You know what I'm saying? I mean, but, for like, from the history, from the, the stories yeah. that are told about our culture. Some of us not even told about our fathers. Right. It's like, you know, he he did something so crazy to moms, like, she don't even talk about him. Like, he don't exist. He don't even exist. Yeah, he don't even exist. So it's like, it's it's almost like we're being embedded in us to to not know. Withhold anything that adds insult to injury from a place of love. But then outside of that, you got things being withheld because it will empower you, Mm -hmm. it will educate you, it will actually increase your awareness. Of you know what you're where you dealing come from, with. Yeah, where you come yeah, from right. dealing with so and so forth. So it's like, so Dubai was that that was like it, the last sign for you. I became Muslim in Abu Dhabi, so that's a city right next to Dubai. But when I went there, like, and it, it was just like, I did my show in Dubai. Then we drove to Abu Dhabi, and it was kind of like right before the crack of dawn. So when I got to my hotel, I was at the Emirates Palace. It was like the only seven star hotel at the time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> your own butler, and I'm a jerk. I'm in the button. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can I get a toothpick? Yeah. Oh, no, you come whenever I'm talking to you. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yo, if you think about it, yo, it's clear for real. Like, if you're paying like 3500 a night, get your money worth. Like, yeah. I'm, touch- I'm putting fingerprints on everything. <laughs> <laughs> Curtains are going to get moved. They're going to move back. You know what I'm saying? The lights, every light. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Butler dude. Yeah. Butler. Then you start hitting the watch to see how fast he comes. <laughs> I, 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 I had about mistake. Like, you, know, you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, I remember like when I walked out on the balcony and I saw the sun rising. And it was something that I think a lot of us take for granted. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, daytime means sleep, nighttime means party. In that industry. Yeah. No one looks at the sun. And the only time you may pay any mind to it, if you go to like a beach or something, you gotta go to Cabo, yeah. you gotta go somewhere where you actually can identify right, right, right. with the sun. But other than that, it's just like, you know, we just crack right, the cool. lines, yeah. mm-hmm. yeah. light come through, start the day, that's that. night come down, shower, get fresh, go yeah, out, hang out, out you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, that's the simplicity of that experience 
was the defining point where I realized that everything that was being shown to me came full circle. Mm. You know, and I accepted it right then and there. And that was it? Yeah, I mean, actually, I literally ran down to the lobby. Like, when I opened the blind, seen the sun rise. You call the butler? <laughs> yeah. You know what? That would have been that was easier. The that, you know, but the, I'm, I, I'm probably, I'm going to tell you why I probably didn't. <laughs> because I already had him on the clock. <laughs> and what I was feeling, I needed immediate attention and yeah, like gratification. I, yeah. I needed immediate instant gratification. Right, right, right. Because it's like, when well, you got something pulsating in your heart, it's like, I would have lost it waiting on the butler. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I ran down to the lobby. First Muslim I found I was like, yo, how I become Muslim? He was he was startled because you know no one runs up on Muslims and say, yo, I want to be Muslim. How do I become? Yeah, yeah. He like he want to be Muslim. He's like, yeah, I want to be Muslim. He's, like, He's just like I said, yo, you like, did that yo, perfect. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm really like close to just snatching his clothes. I'm like, yo, <laughs> like, you know, but it was it, that like it was that fever. It was and, that yeah. pulsating. It was that like, wallahi, like it was something I've never felt before. And, you had and, to I, and I travel and I talk to a lot of at-risk youth, whether they're Muslim, non-Muslim, whatever, because a lot of them are curious about, like, how you just leave all that for this? So when I tell this story every time, you know what I'm saying, it just replays that moment, and I still don't find words to explain that particular moment. Because it was so prolific for exactly. you. But when something resides in the heart, you can just take love, for instance. Right. You can't explain it. You know what I'm saying? You act it out. You know what I'm saying? You try to... You know, uh, to articulate, uh, to articulate it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it. You do it through writing. Right. You might just get mad or paint something. It's like you know, whatever it is. It's like is a is 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 a, is a certain emotion that words can't Ever do any justice. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So when that happened, and I accepted Islam, because he told me, he like, hey, just repeat after me. I was like, he said, you know, take your finger. You know, shadow and la ilaha illallah, or shadow and Muhammad Rasulullah. He said, Khalas, you you're Muslim. Like that simple. And that was it. And I was just blown. I'm like, what do you mean? Like that's it. You're like, uh -huh, alhamdulillah, you're Muslim. I'm like, so anyone could, any Muslim could make someone Muslim. Well, or was he have just happened that, to be like, well, like an OG, like an OG the thing that is, nah, it's, no, any Muslim, because they act as a witness. Mm. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so, for example, and not to try to, you know, downplay anybody else's faith, but we don't have to make an appointment. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I'm feeling this now. You're telling me Sunday at 3 o'clock. Like, <laughs> when I, I, look, mm -hmm. I might not live the Sunday. Right, right. Like, I got it now. I, I need now. that now. Right. You know what I'm saying? And basically, when I experienced it, it was a nuance for me. Because nothing never came simple. Like, we don't have simplicity. Mm -hmm. Even for some of us who don't have the most, you know what I'm saying, uh, 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 tumultuous lifestyles or whatever, it still ain't nothing simple. So when that actually happened to me, it was like, yo. I called first Muslim, only Muslim I knew was a brother from Philly. You know uh, what I'm saying? He was wild. Shocking. I was yeah. gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, cause, yeah, because what happened, you know, that was like, okay, that happened, but I feel it. I, I, I feel like something changed. My right. heart did a somersault. You just weren't familiar with I just what? needed yeah. like that. Confirmation. That, yeah, I needed gotcha. it. Was it like this for you so when called, you one of the wildest dudes I know, he like used to sell, you know, guns and all. That's what I already knew him. He right. never invited me to Islam. He never like talked about and Islam. And he probably told you like And, and I the, called him. It was a connection, like the same kind of But funny though, he was just like, you know, I like Islam Lake. And we like, wait, Islam, who this? I said, yo, this Loon. He said, You Muslim? <laughs> wow. I'm like, yeah, I just took my shahada. He was like, yeah, how you know? Like he he, he questioning it. <laughs> like he trying to figure out like how. Yeah, he's making how it very. Get, how you get yeah, to this? Yeah, point. he's making it very complicated. Yeah, so yeah. I just like I banged it on like, my question. <laughs> so I got I got a question I I need to ask. Uh -huh. Um, the last time you were here, uh, you had just I don't want to say you just got out of jail, but you've been out for a little bit. Yeah. And after, I kind of was still just got out. You was, no, yeah, no, he was, yeah. he was, he was, he was one of our first, first, yeah. our first interviews. Yeah, he was yeah. a little. He was when a little first got out. Yeah, when he when he. Um, but after you came on the show, you you um, you reunited with Puff. Yeah. And you know, Puff shared it on Instagram, and y'all, yeah. you know, had a moment there. I gotta ask you, after finding religion and after being in jail and then running into him. What was that conversation like? That's a great question. Um, 
everything leading up to that, I believe I was being prepared for. For because that moment. For all these moments. Okay. Because you got to remember, like, when I became Muslim, I kind of fled. Mm -hmm. I was Muslim yeah. three years before yeah. I went to prison. So I'm going to put that out there. A lot of people thought I became Muslim in, in prison. I, yeah. I definitely did. Yeah, no, I, was Muslim, <laughs> no, I was Muslim three years before I went to I lived in Egypt. You uh -huh. know what I'm saying? I studied out there. I read, write, speak Arabic. So I, I really went and immersed myself in the study of Islam. Because Islam is a knowledge-based religion. It's like anything in life. You know, you get more inclined to something, the more you learn about mm -hmm. it. You know what I'm saying? And everything should be that way. Because when we just take the lover's leap, but we just leap, it's like there's no education. Mm -hmm. So you're bound to have some turnoffs, some deterrence, some, some you know, type of... Some wall. Yeah, yeah, some type of obstruction or, you know, impediment. So I felt like being a person in a position of influence prior to all of that, I'm vulnerable all over again. I'm back to wearing pampas. You know what I'm saying? So I can't. And that's, you know, you, you talked about your pet peeve off camera. We ain't going to get into all that. But I'm just saying, <laughs> mine is vulnerability. And I think every nah. man shares that to some degree. Yeah, I got it. Because it kind of coincides with what you said. No, we, I can, we don't got to do that. We don't got to do that. We don't got to do that. Yeah, we ain't going to get into detail. Nah, we, maybe right? next time. Yeah, yeah maybe next, next time. time. Yeah. But okay. that vulnerability was something that I hadn't experienced in a very long time. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I made my bones in the street. I'm very comfortable in every environment I've ever been in. But to have the reset button hit like that, mm -hmm. have to, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, no, I got to go. I got to go learn. I got I to gotta, I gotta make sure that I can. So when I, you know, long story short, when I say everything was preparation, is that from that, moving, living in Egypt, studying, I actually went and made Hajj. Came back, dropped the stuff off I bought for my family. Was about to go to Belgium to give a talk at this prestigious university, and I just got back, like mm. almost two years ago. So, the nine years in prison also acted as a means of preserving me, giving me an opportunity for once in my life to pull over and park. And I've been running seven. around. Yeah, I've been running around Seventh Avenue. Anybody can tell you to know me since about '85. Mm -hmm. I was ten out there. You know what I'm saying? Had several hustles, mm -hmm. packing bags, you know what I'm saying, washing cars. I used to go to the Bronx, buy the 50 cent air freshers, bring in the hog, sell them <laughs> for a dollar. Had a paper route, and I was extorting white kids for G.I. Joe's. I, had, I, I was over, you know what I'm saying, bagging up. I was just bag up, you know what I'm saying, my cousin, you know what I'm saying, I might take a little lookout job every now and then. Right, right. I was on the corner, I'm on, the, on anyway. I get on the aisle just to say, yo, thermo. You know, right. so it was like as a kid in Harlem, it, was, it, it. was fruitful. Yeah, you know to, be, what I'm to be on the yeah. block. Yeah, so all yeah. the guys that was recognized for getting money, yeah, I remember they was 15 at the time. Mm -hmm. The rich, the poles, all of, they was yeah. 15, Teenagers. 16 years old. Kids. So me being 10, you know what I'm saying? It's like you we had a place you, too. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and you know we breaking a hundred dollar bill now. You know what I'm saying? The singles. So you got. Not. Old pockets, you know what I'm saying? Your yeah. little Lee jeans, like, you know, so it's like, <laughs> this is me. This is what I know. So this is the first time I ever had to pull over and park. Mm. But it was beautiful because on the outside looking in, everybody was just, you know, man, that's crazy. Yo, oh, man. But in all actuality, it was, it, was, it was a university. You know what I'm saying? I was able to take a lot of time to prepare myself for everything that's happening now. Because not even to be funny, I hadn't been around non-Muslims for a long time, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Not that I'm allergic or anything like that. It's just I took a certain path initiative to, you know, grow mm -hmm. in my faith, which didn't include Dumb. a lot of, you know, non-Muslim presence, because I'm in Muslim countries, right. you know what I'm saying? I'm everywhere, I'm Jordan, Malaysia, I'm, I'm in Kuwait. I'm, I'm, this is where I'm reside. I hadn't been back to the States at all. Like, right. I'm literally out there just- in a natural know, environment. Exactly. And Islam is not strange. You know what I'm saying? I've been to places where whole bus will pull over. Everybody get off the bus and pray on the side of the road, get back on the bus. Like, you know, it's not strange. Right. You see somebody praying outside, like, you know, you especially like, during 2001, it was like... you like, hold on. Oh, whoa, whoa, yeah. what is he doing? Like, you know what I'm saying? What's in that bag? It's like, you know, yeah, yeah. it was a certain kind of paranoia. Of course. Because of the energy that yeah. was surrounding that. So with that being said, it prepared me to come back into an environment which I'm not at all oblivious of 
but it's new again. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And this I was telling you earlier about Kim aiding me in kind of selecting environments or platforms that's going to be conducive to what I'm on without taking away anything from Shout out to the wonderful Kim else, Osorio. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. She's the yeah. wonderful so, woman. Exactly. Mm-hmm. My girl. I've known <laughs> Kim for 20 years. Yeah. You know, she... she she fish your tissue. Kim, so, Kim is my journalism mom. We both we both raised under the Kim tree. Yeah, between Kim and, and so she uh, trusts us when she says, yeah, right, right. <laughs> yeah, between Kim and, 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 and I trust and her info. because yeah. you know, like I said, reaching back in that space, you know, and the fear of being vulnerable, I had to reach out to somebody I know for twenty years. I know for twenty years, mm. like I feel comfortable. That can help you articulate yeah. and not you know, be can help me write my book. Right. You know what I'm saying? So opening up to somebody is another thing. That's a trust issue. Everything is about trust with me. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I said this experience of coming back in this space was really like, you know, a challenge. You know, I hope nobody think it's easy or I'm, it, I'm I, making I, it look easy, but it's like I mean, ju- really- if you just if you just if you just listen to this podcast and go to the episode that he was on and Prior see to- how he's talking now, yeah. like it's 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 night and day a little bit. Yeah. You know what well, I mean? I, mean, no, like, I, I, still... I do, I do, I, I feel the same vibe, but it's just like, I think now the the comfort level. The comfort yeah, no, exactly. Like, like, I mean, because I had to figure it you out. You had to figure Obviously. out what was yeah. going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm, comfort I'm level was way Transparent. I had to figure yeah. it out. Right. Because. So and that prepared you to 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 see Puff again. To have that conversation. That That's what I was getting at. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm sorry I took the long road. That's all good. <laughs> but I just had to clarify, like, because it's like you know, transparency with me is is golden, and I and I and, and especially in this day and age, it's so easy to get things misconstrued. Right. A sound bite can murder you. Mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying I get it. I had media training. You know, yeah. As a person, you know, say, see this certain level in the music business, it's like, they gonna set you down. Like, look, it's gonna be a media coach. It's like, yeah, I'm gonna keep doing what I'm, nah, not now. You're in a whole different tax bracket, you know, mm-hmm. everything has changed. So anyway, I was always like kind of yearning to have that reunion. And I think through the course of my incarceration, it became more of a necessity because, you know, Sean versus P. Diddy, Puff, you know, I wouldn't say entirely two different people, Mm -hmm. but one is a lot more grounded and a lot more, you know, um, understanding, understanding and genuine, Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And whatever armor or defense system had to be established in order to preserve that person, that's the person I was inclined to talk to have the reunion gotcha. with. Because if it was Diddy, that means I'm coming as Loon. Uh, right. Loon not coming to have no reunion with Diddy. You know, Amir's coming to have a reunion with, with Sean. Sean. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And then my concerns was, you know, Kim, of course, because, you know, KP was a very special person. Mm-hmm. He was a very, very special person. You know what I'm saying? Not just in his life, Everybody she touched. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's a single person on this planet that can have anything negative to say about her. Right. You know what I'm saying? If they do, obviously they got problems. Something about that. Yeah, 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 they got yeah, problems. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then Andre, that's like, that's back to back. It's back to, like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah. not being able to have that conversation and having to put it on hold because you in prison, like, man, I got dudes coming in me in prison. Like, yo, you heard just, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's like, I'm closing all doors in prison. I really don't want to get acquainted with, you know what I'm saying? Like, I uh, had my picks. Right. I stay within my community, because that's how prison is. I stay with the Muslims, you know, I see dudes in yeah. New York, you know, I don't know why you here, I don't know who you told them, I don't know nothing. I'm just, I try to stay away from all right. that. But when you have that, energy coming and it's like it's warranted now because this is a genuine moment where someone's trying to inform you about something that they can easily assume that this may have impact you as well and it was true like yeah like man for real like what happened what, you know what they saying like you know and then like i said right after that andre so that reunion for me was you know opportunity to see a friend see a, a big brother see someone who helped rid me 
in a direction in this business that did amazing things for my life. And gratitude is something that always takes precedence when it comes to me. Like when I deal with people, you know, if there's anything that you've added value to me, that's something that you should appreciate, you know, even if it ain't what you actually wanted. And that's where we have a problem because it's like, okay, you got something. You didn't completely lose, did you? You know what I'm saying? It's like, yo, I just, I'm on my third passport. You know what I'm saying? It's like, there's all kinds of stuff going on like that came from that. How could I sit up here and complain. and complain about a particular party where he didn't share no champagne? Like, you got dudes <laughs> really, like, investing in stuff yeah. like that. And it, it, Wait, it, did it, that really happen? No, I'm kidding. Nah, I'm just saying, <laughs> well, you know? I, think, I think you come from <laughs> a different perspective than yeah, I come from a, a different, lot of people who yeah. might have worked with him in the past, man. And I think that just kind of speaks to, um, you know, the, the type of person you are, the, the religion that you found, and yeah. I think, like, the sense of self that you found because... It's very easy to, you know, see somebody who has so much and after the fact, you know, not be right next to him as as you were right next to him for some of his biggest moments. That's real it's real easy for people to be people. like, you know. Yeah, but I think it's easy way. for people to project their perception of what they think it is. And that's what we were talking about you know, before. Exactly. Talking about the and if of what you the confused was. about what's going on in your reality, this is your reality. Yeah. This guy is just... You know, he's just that's fishing. him. That's mm-hmm. that's his reality. So if you go for that bait, that means that either you have some deficiencies with yourself, or maybe you're not grateful enough to understand what's actually happening for you, or you're insecure, and so on, or you're insecure, or whatever the case may be. I didn't have those problems. I used to actually repel a lot of things that used to come back to me about, you know, say about Puff. It's like, I mean, I don't know what you're talking about. I ain't, I don't see that. Mm. I ain't got that problem. Like, I'm like, not in that situation. Yeah, that's, know, that's like, not what I'm, I'm, that's not what I'm going yeah, for. Yeah, like, I don't know you what know? you're talking about. And then a lot of that be venomous, you know, because, like, people just want to slide up, like, you know. It's like the, like the divide and conquer. Like, if exactly. I'm going to put this person over here just so I can get them away from each other, yeah. or whatever the case is. Yeah. And that's, I think that's what happens a lot just in the industry as a whole, not just with, you know, with Puff or whatever. Like, people see, you know, people being successful, being happy together. It's like, nah, we got to we gotta split that up. Yeah, because, I mean, you're going to bump heads. Relatives do it. How are your, um, have you reunited with anyone else after, like, uh, um, in this pat where you've been out two years? Yeah, yeah, I've been out so you just the been... 29th of July. Oh, that's be, coming up. Yeah, it'd be two years. Wow. It'd be exactly that's two coming years. Coming right up. Uh, and to be honest with you, I've been, I hit the floor running. Like, I've been. But you came out during quarantine. Yeah. Which yeah. is now, a now weird was, time to come yeah. out. I was about to say, like, that. I, if I remember correctly, I think that's why it kind of accelerated your release, right? Like, yeah. they're letting people out during the pandemic. Yeah, because that, the first step act, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. There was a certain condition that was added to compassionate release. Because compassionate release was almost impossible to get. Uh-huh. You had to literally be dying. Or well, have a single relative that's dying. Even if that relative is dying, you had to have at least 60% or 50% of your time done before mm-hmm. they even considered you for, you know what I'm saying? So it was some real stipulation that was almost impossible to get. Mm-hmm. The First Step Act actually included another condition which became synonymous with COVID. Mm-hmm. So when the CDC started talking about who was at high risk, people with asthma or any kind of underlying, you know, like bronchitis uh, yeah, or yeah. I had it all. You know what I'm saying? I actually in prison. I had pneumonia. I had tuberculosis. I had acute bronchitis and even caught laryngitis where wow. the sewer water gets mixed with, you know, the, the, the drinking water and it shut the whole prison down. I'm talking about people was going from crazy. three holes. Wow. Mouth, peeing, like it was crazy. Where was you locked up? This this happened in um, Yazoo, Mississippi. Because the feds, you move around, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Stop. no, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, but I, that's I started, why I asked yeah. you where you was locked yeah, up. Yeah, like, was, was in like, Mississippi, Shh. you know what I'm saying? And I had TB and I think I caught, I caught pneumonia in Butner. Then when I got shipped from there, found I had TB. Treated that, was done with that. Then I had acute bronchitis. Mm. So I had so many attacks on my lungs. I was like the poster child for the CDC conditions. Just wow. Like, you know, so... I mean, you look real healthy right now. I yeah, mean. I mean, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, when we were talking about that earlier, like, dudes come home, you gotta understand, you eating processed food. Yeah. 
for years, for decades. You know what I'm saying? So even if you turn it into something as far as exercise, because that's why exercise is so important, because if you just sit there and let that stuff fest in your body, you will come home with diabetic. You Definitely. will come home with third, you know, second, third stage cancer. Yeah. You'll come home with something because the food that you're consuming, the only way to get any inkling of nutrition out of it is to turn your body into a furnace. That's what working out is about. It's about turning your body into a furnace. So even anything that touches it going to burn. And any absorption or utilization of any nutrients is going to be applied based on you continuously keeping that engine burning. Because mm. if you just sit around, you know what happened. Yeah. This joint just fall over. Yeah, that, it's right? over. Get that just done yeah, no, that's it. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> I want that done lap. No, he said, Kaz, he said he worked out this morning. I was like, you still doing jail workouts? <laughs> he was like, yup. All, right. yeah. all body weights, He was like, yup, calisthenics, yeah, no, all that. Yeah. So, you know, when... I applied for the um, compassionate release. My judge, he ruled that COVID in itself is compelling and extraordinary. Because that's the um, condition of compassionate release. You have to mm -hmm. have something that's compelling and extraordinary. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, it's almost impossible. Like, what is extraordinary? Like, okay, I'm about to die. <laughs> like, my grandma is the only person, living relative I got. Can I be go home? I remember like, you know, the news of you coming out. And I was just like, I could have sworn he got way more years. Like, he's got yeah. a couple more years to go. And then, you know, when the pandemic, you know, first started, it was around when this show first started, yep. like, I started hearing about that compassionate release about yeah. a lot of people. Like, a lot of people I knew started getting out mm -hmm. because, you know, of certain, you know, health situations and, yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. So it was, it's nuts that, like, those... It's almost like if one thing was off, you'd probably still be in jail. Yeah. Right? Like, it's it's crazy that There's even have... a lot have... of dudes that got shut down. I, I know a dude that had a CPAP machine. Like, huh. he snore and wakes the whole dorm up. Like, and got and got just, like... Shuffled. Wow. You know what I'm saying? I seen a couple people die off of COVID. And they, they covered it up. You know what I'm saying? Try to see how they had other condition. But it was COVID. Mm -hmm. Took them out of it. But when I got the compassionate release... I literally had an altercation with a police officer five days before I was released. Mm. I had a problem with the police a whole bit. This one decides he wants to put his hands on me. Alley ooped him. <laughs> you know, now I, I went to the hole. Mm. You know, because it was crazy because a lot of people don't know this as well is that a lot of those officers in there because of the, the, the influx of staff that was getting COVID. They had to actually work overtime and stuff. Right. Mm. So they bring in that attitude to work. And they, they treat us like we it. bought COVID in the jail. Yeah. But it's like, you know where I was at last night. Right. Like you <laughs> I don't me. know where you was at. Yeah, like, I don't know who coughs. Y'all yeah, brought it in. Yeah, yeah like y'all you know brought it in. Wait, so somebody really tried to somebody pressed you over like some COVID? No, 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 this officer, this this was like the beginning of his uh I think he's saying like the attitude the of attitude. it. Yeah, the attitude. Oh, okay. yeah, the attitude. See, it was, like it was a buildup because all of them was kind of treating us a certain way, but this dude in particular, he came in on just capping on a like, right. he, came in, like <laughs> he, he came in, gave disclaimers, he mandated masks. It was like, yo, hold, hold, hold up. First of all, I'm in a low security. I'm not in a cell no more. You know right. what I'm I was in the medium, it's different. You're in a cell, just me, you. We gonna make sure we all right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But when you're in an open cubicle, there's no six feet. What are you talking about? Everybody you got three of us in. This is a closet. Mm -hmm. A cell is a bathroom. If you live in a cell, you live in the bathroom. <laughs> you live in a cubicle, you know what I'm saying? You live in a closet. Right. You know what I'm saying? And then right over the wall, there's three other guys. Like he can call for come over this way. Like, there's no like, way. On top you know what I'm saying? There's no <laughs> way. Yeah. To escape anything. Yeah, there's yeah. no way to practice yeah. social distancing. Yeah. So yeah. now when you got a power junkie coming in trying to oppose all kinds of things. That's so I was in the TV room, chilling. Every time I seen it, I would go the other way. I started spending more time. I knew I was going home. I'm about to go to halfway house. Because you knew I, what his yeah, attitude was. I only came home two months before my time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm still grateful, but it wasn't like you some like people that like years. literally right. beat like yeah. five, six, yeah. yeah. So anyway, I'm in the TV room. I'm eating an apple. Can't eat an apple with a mask, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I saw him, I bite the apple. He, right when I bite, he walks in. He looks at me and write my name down. So I just flip. I lost it because I'm like, I'm getting tired of treated. You know what I'm saying? It's like, this is the tail end of the marathon. Right. This is when you're supposed to run like, your don't hardest. don't push me. Yeah. 
So I ran down to him. Like, yo, man, what's up? Why you put my name in? He said, yo, you talk to your counselor about it. Like, my counselor ain't put my name in there. You put my name in there. He said, yo, you better back up. I'm like, oh, God. He had to do a like, oh. the cavalry. So it's like, now I'm like, all right. You're a coward. You know, so that's all I had for him. Because I was like, don't, don't. Thinking don't, everything. Yeah, it ain't worth it. Don't it. Even, don't children, <laughs> yeah, 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 but it's don't like, even, yo, don't you. Even, I could just knock all the front of child right here, You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but like, you know, you, you, you got to catch yourself. Bro, like, it's like, bro, all right, all right. Okay, you got it. You got it. Okay. <laughs> so now he tells me, yo, go over there. I go, I comply. But in the back of my mind, you know, I'm having visions of everyone that I watched on TV died at the hands of police right. by complying, by compliance. You know what I'm saying? So now I go over this way. I guess he know Calvary is close. He thinks he's going to take it Did you another call him step. coward? No, the, the cavalry. Oh, the cavalry. I thought he said yeah. coward came over yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. No, the cavalry is coming. He said when the cavalry when, the, yeah. when they hit the deuces, it's no yeah. different than out here. Yeah. yeah. You, get, you get one routine traffic stop. Next thing you know, seven cars. Mm -hmm. They do the same thing in prison. It's like, yo, you, like, you, 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 you try in your hand. You see that I'm more man than you think. So now I'm calling seven of them. Other, yeah. yeah. So now he knows they close. So now he tests. He tries to. Yeah. And that was it. Damn. You know, spin, dry, drag, like, I mean, just, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so now. Now you're back in the hole. And it's crazy because the captain, he knows me. I mean, the lieutenant. They all knew me on the compound. I was the easy peasy. I was the cool, like, I'm cool. They all I know, they didn't know I read. I said, I'm out the way. You stay out the business. You yeah, stay I'm out, out the way. Yeah. So he asked me, he's like, yo, I looked on the camera, like, why, why did you shift your body? I said, I said listen, man. I ain't here for telling, dog. Whatever the camera say, that's what y'all got to do. He said, but I said, look, I said, yo, yo, you're a black man, right? I said, you see what happened in these people out here in the street mm -hmm. every time they comply? Y'all going to earn y'all's, man. Y'all going to give me the old-fashioned way. You going <laughs> to kill me, dog. Because mm -hmm. I'm just not going to give you my neck. Does, does you know that, what I'm saying? Because if I extend that, and then now I got to worry about you putting 200 pounds of your body on, on my, my neck. neck. Yeah. Now, does that you know, moment take you back to... Being, you know, thinking about those six million people that rather fought and absolutely died. I was one of them. Instead of that, being yeah, like at that one at that moment and not even thinking about them. It's funny you said that, but yeah. at that moment, you gotta understand that I stand for something that exceeds just being a man. See, we on man time. Yeah. Right? <laughs> we, we, you know, we try to exhume mm -hmm. man time. We try to make sure that that's at the forefront of everything. Mm -hmm. But my body's just alone. This don't even belong to me. You know what I'm saying? This is alone. I got to turn this in there sometime. You know what I'm saying? So now is a whole nother level of how I protect this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? This was given to me. I didn't ask for this. I didn't ask to be here. I didn't ask for my parents. I didn't get to pick them. <laughs> None, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. right. So now I'm on a different wavelength than the average man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to say because I'm Muslim makes me, I could hit through walls and leap over buildings in a single <laughs> bound. I'm just saying that at the end of the day, my position is a lot more firmer than the average man. You know what I'm saying? So when you look at yourself that way, it gives you everything you need. It doesn't have nothing to do with this. When you look at yourself in that perspective, no matter what your ethnicity is, yes, you're, you're you alone. You know what I'm saying? You are alone, and it's going to return to the sender whenever he feels. When he's ready. You're not going to decide that. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to allow you to. You know what I'm saying? I'm not even comply with just squandering my loan. This was given to me. I can't just let you because you having a bad day or. You know what I'm saying? Somebody, some broad record. Like you're not home. fucking up my rental. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> even though it's insured. Rent. But you, <laughs> I still gotta, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, you're not yeah, fucking yeah, my yeah, rental yeah, up, yeah, bro. I still gotta there. return this to Hertz. My nigga, like, what are we talking about? There you go. And nah, that's, and that's, and that's where I think a lot of people don't see when they look at Palestine or any type of civil strife that goes, they like, you got kids throwing rocks at a tank. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You got dudes here. Supposed to be the baddest mofo no down around this town. Who am I? Like, showing up, right? <laughs> but no actuality. They get in that room. They get that light in their face. They like, oh, yeah, his name is Jerry. I'm a dude over there. <laughs> but when you see a kid that understands 
you know, what it entails to be a servant of the Most High. Yeah. A tank is not an opposition anymore, or any of that stuff don't even matter no more. Mm. And I think that, you know, that's something that everyone should kind of explore and try to embrace because it's a whole nother level of understanding what your purpose is. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? I'm Man. created solely for the purpose to worship the one that created me. Not money, not fame, not, you know, anything else. Because those things got an expiration date. You know, your Lord is eternal. You know what I'm saying? But everything else going to inspire. Even this water, this ain't got a date on it. If you think it's water, it's like, yo, what's the date on this? Yeah, date? leave that thing outside for ten years. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. It this, will yeah, expire. It's gonna turn into something else. So you know, and not to you know be winded, but it's just that's what I carry today. You know Man, and that's what I'm on, bro. I, I this the this is this is already from, one of my favorite. Yeah, episodes. like from the first time we <laughs> talked, like nigga, this is just. Yeah, a one eighty, but yeah, you know I mean, but y'all like, gave me the opportunity to warm up because it's like that's yeah, that's we have me and her fucking like <laughs> you know, fucking me with the button. Nah, this is this like, is this is such a beautiful conversation, well, I man. And, and I, I feel like <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you know uh, this episode was really dope because you know the growth of you and not even just you know if you filed the show, if you filed music career, yeah. if you just filed the man, like you've seen it. You know what I'm saying? But I don't think you ever really opened up to nah, this I mean, level. I mean, and that's kinda, what he was saying about Kim. Kim about has helped him yeah, got yeah, to the know. space. Yeah. I think yeah. people just woke up, saw you with the long beard, and was like, oh, oh snap, shit. what happened? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And it's funny because it's people that know me for a long time still trying to figure out. Hey, Lo, I got a question for you, bro. What's up, man? Uh, what's something you've always wanted to try? I always wanted the bungee jump. Nice. All right. Well, Gold Peak Real Brewed is here to unleash your thirst for trying. So take this as your sign to say yes, opt in, and go for it. Because trying is what life is all about. Try Gold Peak. How to What's what? approach me. Yeah, yeah. talk to you. You know what I'm saying? And I look at it like, you know. It's, and we're respectful here, too. We, we, we didn't bring no look yeah, about it. Yeah, no, 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 we didn't. That's, that's, right that's what he said that. When he, I came in, right? Yeah. And that's why I think the barriers get broken. It's like, mm. I got to talk to you. Because <laughs> if you just look at, you know, my Instagram, you see all the motivational speeches, you see everything that's in a certain context. But until you actually have a conversation, it's like, oh, nah, man, it's cool. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, and, and, and this is the whole purpose of this. And this is the whole purpose of, you know, and not to offend nobody, but being selective in what platform enables me to do that at the same time probably add value to what's already there that's valuable. Right. Like I, I I really admire what y'all doing. Like I said, and it wasn't the warm up when I came in. It was the first <laughs> show. That was oh. the warm up. Y'all yeah. gave me the first No, no, yeah, no, yeah. You, you, yeah, yeah, you did To actually, that. and I was in the car at the time. I remember. Like, I remember, yeah, yeah, in. we saw him. Yeah, right, yeah, you did yeah, yeah, that from right. my old basement. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So now so, we up here. It's like, yeah, all right. So I got to congratulate y'all too, man. And I hope that, you know, y'all continue to, you know, Grow because growth is beautiful to me. I, I like I like growth. I don't want to see no like I told you earlier. I don't want to see nobody, nobody in the stagnant. same spot. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like I'm scared of you, and I don't even know what your plan B is. Yeah, like you ever go back to got, the block and you see somebody there, you're like, you still just yeah, yeah. And it's like I I, I, I stay I, when I come to Harlem, I go everywhere I want. Yeah, right. anyone, everybody you know see me with police is, escort. Is, is love, nah, never. <laughs> it's crazy. I never had that. I never had that. Even at the height of my career. I don't think you would need it. Yeah, that's what <laughs> got me in so much it, trouble, though. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. That's why I think you yeah, would need it. I got in a lot of trouble because <laughs> of that career. Yeah. I have a random question. There we right? go. The, uh, <laughs> random question. Because nine years, that's a long time. Yeah. Right? Is there something that you do at home that's like still like, Prison man, like like prison man is like hide that's the soap a, yeah, or something. Like hide the toothpaste. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's a great like, question. That's like, a great what's question. one thing that you still do that you're like, oh man, I ain't gotta do this. I'm gonna tell you, I pace. You pace. But I always did that. I though, pace, but I pace probably a little bit more now. You know what I'm saying? Pace has like pace in the pa room. Like, yeah, just, yeah, just walk. Like yeah. if I'm on, like not even I can say a heated conversation, but just a conversation is just like I be tearing the rug up. Yeah, but. As far as everything else, every time I felt like I was doing something that was an autopilot, mm -hmm. I would switch it up. Mm -hmm. 
So like, uh, you know, you maneuver what? differently. Yeah, it's like you know what? I'm gonna I'm shampoo my hair first, then condition it, then wash my body. Yeah. It's like, because if I find myself just just automatically like <laughs> like, like whoa whoa whoa. You see, I gotta, I gotta do that's that. that's that's such a that's such a that's such a point that I don't think people really like connect with because yeah. like you don't get you get told when to shower in jail. Yeah. You get told like that's the first thing anybody I talk to that that just come home. The one of the biggest shocks to them is not shocks. One of the biggest like adjustments is like, oh man, I just want to take a shower and not be told like get out, when to go in. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like even if nobody's telling you. Yeah, you still have that's just not a place to party. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like I see my man. I'm trying to get in. Yeah, yeah I see my man last night, and he he been down back, yeah. there, but he's standing on Seventh Avenue with flip flops. So I'm like, my whole bed. I didn't walk around with no slippers. You know what I'm saying? My feet are like woven to the shape of sneakers. So, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like I I couldn't. I didn't feel comfortable. And then like when you go in the shower, you know you go in the shower and you put your your boots. The, the the boots that they give you, mm. right there. Step in the shower. You step out, jump in the boots. You know what I'm saying? It's like yo, you going to shower to shower, cause you're here doing it. Come on, I, it's called a shower, <laughs> not an hour. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like once you get settled, it's like you want to, you know. Yeah. Then you may extend it a little bit, but like on introduction, I don't know the environment. I don't, yeah. I don't know. It. Look, man, I'm in there. Boop, whoop, boop, whoop, whoop, and I'm out. You know what I'm saying? So like anybody that's in there a little too long. Somebody might be casing him. Like you don't know what he, you know, yeah. you know, he in there a little too long. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Then you got dudes that's like, come on, they standing there with all their stuff, yeah. <laughs> shower shoes. They got mm -hmm. the shower bag, and they like, yo, my man, like, what's up? <laughs> you know, for chop real. chop. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And yeah, what you got going on? And then he might come out with an attitude. It's like, right, you know what? No shower for me today. Yeah. <laughs> I'm showering the hole. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, it's, 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 you know, but great question. I think people don't understand what institutionalized means. It's not something that just, you know, synonymous with prison. People it's a mental, out here, it's a yeah, people out here are institutionalized. It's a mental thing. You know what I'm saying? When you got a person that got his favorite seat on the train or something like that, mm. like you got people that's like that. Yeah. It's open seats. You they don't, they don't fuck you right. Swinging and over I like the corner, like, man. I like, like the corner. Yeah, right. I like the, I like the corner seat. Favorite parking spots, like stuff like that. And there's a sense of entitlement for some people. But when you're accustomed to getting your way, you want to continuously- Get your way. Yeah, reap that. Yeah, in any environment. And the minute that it's- Taken away from you. Or impeded. Then there's a problem. You lose it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Funny story. I had a brother I was working out on the um rec yard and I had like, you know, a little station set up. I was on a bench and like dumbbells, whatever. So I hit the bench, I look up, the dumbbells going. What's up, bro? He's from DC. Love it, bro. He's burnt out though. Mm. I see him walking <laughs> away with the dumbbells. So I'm like, yo, I right. he had like he hit me. Yeah. I fall right behind him. So he set him down, picked him up, brought him back to his station. He like, yo, what you doing? Huh? I said, man, you seen what these was, man. You seen what I was doing. Yo, I, everybody know I do arms on Tuesday. <laughs> I'm listening, yo, yo. It's funny, you know what I'm saying? Now I can laugh at it's it. It's Wednesday. You know bro. what I'm saying? But the, at the moment, I couldn't. Because it's like, I'm not playing with I, I like I ain't, doing I, this with you. ain't nobody watching or, you like that. Like, I, like really, every yeah, everybody, yeah, everybody, yeah, like, everybody, everybody knows you do on Tuesday. Like, like, that's on, crazy, man. right? Stop when you that. say everybody know I do arms, I did it. I do arms on Tuesday. Right. Like we know you come out and work out. <laughs> I don't know what body <laughs> part. Body part you, like, you work like, like, you know that, bro. But you just going to assume that everybody, everybody know you do arms. You know, it was funny because he got mad as he walked. I don't even want to work out. <laughs> okay. And he bounced. So I'm like, all right, cool. Get so my now I'm in my mind because you understand this, this environment still, even though we cool and everything, but people were not all the way there. So, like, yeah. when I started hearing a lot of conversation about mental illness, I could relate. You know what I'm saying? I could truly relate. Because all of us, especially as people of color, we have PTSD. Mm -hmm. I think we all should get a check. I think that when people come back from wars and stuff and they get treated that way or they get a check, they get all kinds of medical benefits. It should be the same for a person coming from prison. Oh, for sure. You know what I'm saying? Because we do, we do a terrible job yeah, of, of re-acclimating uh, uh, you know, yeah. re yeah, yeah, people yeah. into society. That's the worst. That's one of the worst things we have. Because you're allowing the them to come back. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? You, you, 
in any and you don't even have to be going to prison right like just that adjustment to real life just being away from anything yeah and just expecting them i mean that's why like the 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 people the rate of people that go back to jail is so high yeah. because we do a terrible job as a country i mean we could break it down state by state but just as a country as a whole we don't know how to bring people back into society the right way. Right, 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 right. Well, no, that that's is why it. I asked them that because yeah. I know a lot of people that came out of prison, well, not a lot, but the people I do know that came back from prison, they had certain, like, habits. very prison Tendencies, manner, like, habits, yeah, like, yeah. really fast and, like, yeah. do stuff. They're not used to it. They're not used to it. They're not used to shit. Yo, you're, yeah. you're good. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. nah, they, back. they ain't good. This is, this <laughs> is. They're not good. That's the thing. It's like, you know, I definitely think more attention should be paid to that. I think that when people start considering lobbying for certain things, they need to reestablish education in prison because they stole a lot of that stuff, you know, especially in the feds. There's no more college courses. Yeah. You know, it probably came from taxpayers complaining, well, I got to pay 35000 a year for my <laughs> son to go to school. How should an inmate who did a crime, yeah. you know, he made a choice, he shouldn't get educated. But it's like, no, you, you know, I'm coming back. Right. I might see your son. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I might see this son that you care so much about. Mm -hmm. So don't you want me to come back and actually be somebody that he can... An upstanding citizen. Yeah. Yeah. Or oh, do you want me to come back yeah. and, and be, be the same and he be the reason I go back. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. They don't. They don't think that They way. don't. I don't think they. I don't think they want you nah, they don't to be that like way. that. Nah, you know, like you know, they live far away. They got course. squirrels and birds singing in the morning. They think that it ain't gonna reach them. Yeah. But then it does. And then. I've never heard a squirrel sing. <laughs> no, but he's singing. Oh, you yeah. Yeah, squirrels and birds sing. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Man, loon. Bougie uh, rats. Bougie rats. Yeah. <laughs> and we, and, and, they all that because they got fluffy tails. I know he heard, I know, I know CGF heard squirrels and birds singing the Hamptons, so we're going to we gonna, we gonna get to him in a second. Fluffy. Fluffy fabrics he has <laughs> on. Right. He got on with them high socks. We're I'm mad at you. Go ahead, bro. But loon, man, uh, this is incredible. I feel like we I could do this for, for hours. And, yeah. and you're always welcome to come back here, man, and come kick it Definitely with us and, and talk with us because we could we could do this all night long. Yeah. Like, this is yeah. fantastic. I wanted to say so. something in closing because Please. I think that, you know, for those that have been kind of paying attention to this other transition in my life, mm -hmm. there's been so many of them. And I'm definitely looking forward to sharing them. I got a book, you know what I'm saying, I'm going to release that, talks about the multiple trends. And it's the one that Kim helped you with. Yeah, Kim helped me do this book. I'm actually doing a six part doc series I'm working on as well. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a lot of influential people that everybody knows, loves, <laughs> reveres, that's in it. And I always wanted to do these type of projects initially for closure, because I feel like I'm going somewhere else. Mm -hmm. But then I, as I think about it, it's like, you know what? There's a lot of takeaways. Because if you think about the autobiography of Malcolm X, you know what I'm saying? You met Malcolm Little. You met Detroit Red. You met Malcolm X. You met El Hajj Malik Shabazz. There's a lot of takeaway. You know what I'm saying? And there's a lot to relate to. You have people who can relate to Malcolm Little being born in this, you know, Jim Crow South, whatever the case may be. And then you got. Detroit Red. Oh, it's a nickname you're going to get when you come to Harlem. Wherever you're from, <laughs> you're going to go, which Red? Detroit Red? <laughs> Redhead get, from yeah, Detroit? Exactly. Detroit Red, yeah. Then you're going to get Malcolm, <laughs> Malcolm X, X. Yeah. you know what I'm saying, who was a part of a black nationalist movement, which is called the Nation Islam. Then he actually discovered true Islam, you know what I'm saying, and found, and then he actually only lived 10 months after that, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying. So I looked at my book and said, you know, I want to be able to take that format. I may not be, yeah, stories. exactly, and yeah. tell these separate tales and give people the same thing I mentioned. There's no stagnation. Right. Everything is growth from one place to another place to another place and constantly growing, you know, and I want people to be able to experience that. And then at the forefront, as far as, you know, all of us, and, and alhamdulillah, everybody's, starting to embark on this entrepreneurship and that's amazing to me like pe seeing people you know you know inclined to financial literacy and all kinds of things like this i built a vpn while i was in prison you know what i'm saying so i always been kind of in the tech space wow. and it's not something nobody would ever think 
from the kid from Harlem that was a right, bad right, boy, right. you know. But paid meals, which you see on my shirt, is a mobile application that I'm building. And I'm currently like raising funds to actually complete the app. So since I've been home, I've been manually implementing the functionalities of the app. You know what I'm saying? And trying to establish transparency through a trust. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? When people, you have a lot of people here that have good hearts around the world, especially even in our country. You know, it's with all of the Bullshit. racism, yeah. bigotry, whatever the case is, you have some good people that actually want to do their part. But there's not a lot of trustworthy sources. You know, every time we get like some natural disaster, whether it be Haiti, whatever, millions go this way and probably thousands. Tell me about thousands it. go to the problem. Tell you know me saying? about it. <laughs> exactly. So what I wanted to do when I came home is, you know, establish that transparency and establish that trust with people who entrust me with contributions that they make. And if you see on my on, on my you know my gram, it's like I actually show the food getting cooked. I'm manually preparing, right. packaging, distributing, you know, and I've been doing that since I've been home. But with the app, you know, the application, it, it enables contributors to purchase meals for people in need through registered paid meals vendors. So basically, with me and my, you know, my, my partner created an ecosystem within the problem, you know what I'm saying? Not looking for aid outside the problem. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because inside the problem that we have as far as food insecurity, see, people always equate hunger with homelessness. Homelessness is an issue in itself, and hunger is definitely a component of homelessness. But food insecurity is something that we can all identify with. Like when you have to go to Miss Betty's house and borrow butter, that's food insecurity. Or when you got a refrigerator and there's two empty shelves. That's food insecurity. You know what I'm saying? Even homelessness is not really looked at in its contents. When you have to, you know, you you, live, you, don't, you don't have you're not staying with your mother, you're right. with your aunt. Right. But on the weekend you gotta go to your grandmother's house, cause Leroy coming over. That's homelessness. Cause it's like you're literally bouncing around from, house from to home house. to home. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's like you're not stable. But we always equate it with the guy on the street. You know what I'm saying? So these are things that very I'm very passionate about. Because when you look at give back, we've for some reason in our culture been kind of like forced to look at the guys that was with you. That's your give back. And you see a lot of mm -hmm. entertainers, athletes fail because of that. It's like you trying to be booby smooth, boo black, or you trying to bring all of yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah, not yeah. the yeah. give back. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because y'all all may have contributed to something way more detrimental in your community. Hmm. And giving it back to you. It's just going to keep go bringing the same and, thing down. You know, yeah, it's, it's, it's just, it's, 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 not, it's not, you know, it's not constructive. It doesn't right. help. You know what I'm saying? Instead of just going straight to the root. So with this application, it will, God willing, enable me to feed millions of people a day. Nice. You know what I'm saying? Because you can always have a contributor. You can always have someone who registers a receiver. A root or you always want to have a vendor, which consists of a grocery store, restaurant, food right. truck, food cart, or even a certified private chef. A certified private chef can prepare meals in a house. So is this like... I'm sorry, I want to know. Is this like a meal prepping or? No, it's actually a pay it forward app. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like basically, for example, let's say you're walking down the street. Yeah, break it down to me like I'm. I'm going to give you, I'm gonna give you the, that one, <laughs> one scenario that we all okay. relate okay. to. Every time we walk down the street, we see somebody in need. Right. But we're conflicted. Like, what are you going to do with the money? I asked them. Yeah, yeah, but see, that's what they I'm saying. They can lie. No, some, sometimes <laughs> yeah. they tell me the truth. Sometimes one guy gave up and was like, like I want a beer. Yeah. I said, I respect that. Yeah, <laughs> that's the point. It could be a lot more simple. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, for example, see a guy, he's in need. I don't have to go into his backstory. Go on the app, purchase a meal for him. Uh... Right? Any registered paid meals vendor that's in proximity... We'll he can go redeem the meal. No oh, delivery. Because wow. if he's homeless, yeah. he has to go. So he gets to go into an establishment, sit down and have a dignified meal, and no one knows anything about his backstory. Because like feeding the person, our mantra 
or our motto is that we want to feed people what we would eat ourselves. Mm -hmm. You understand? It's like homeless people get treated a certain way. Of course. They get the brown bag with the grease hanging off yeah. it. Or like, come come see me after the store clothes. Or I'll bring you something. Here's my leftover. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's like yeah. there's no dignity in that. You know what I'm saying? Because every homeless person is not a drug dealer. Every homeless person, you know what I'm saying? Like not a drug addict yeah. or like whatever. He may have definitely been out there fighting the same fight you fight and lost. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So what would restore his motivation to try to re-enter the workforce and be even more competitive than he was before? A good meal. You know what I'm saying? But the one thing that's impeding him is consistency in food. food. Yeah. So you can eliminate that. You've actually gave a person a one up. You've taken something yeah. off his desk. Off his exactly. You know what I'm saying? So that's the whole thing with paid meals. It's extremely different. I'm completely blown away. Yeah. That, that is that's dope. incredible. <laughs> like you've man, I'm glad you, you closed with that. Yeah. Because I, I was about to ask about the shirt and I'm glad this is the last <laughs> thing we talked about because I think people are gonna listen to this this podcast and this episode, and this is a very music New York heavy podcast. I think we're gonna yeah. talk all the bad boy stories yeah, yeah. and the, nah, the puffs nah, and nah, that that. We don't gotta do that. But this, what you're doing right now, what you've been done, the man you're becoming, I already know has already superseded anything that you've done in the past. Absolutely. As far as being an entertainer, as far as rap music, right. as far as the hit records, all that type of stuff. The fact that you had the the to to do your time, the mindset. To do your time, be in the place where. What's up, Kim? Come on, come on, say hi, Kim. We've been talking. Oh, we've been talking shit. about you the whole episode. Oh, Kim. We gotta come wave. Just come wave. Just come wave, Kim. It's Mom, wave it's 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 <laughs> oh, oh my god. Crazy. That's such a random that's conversation. That's, we were just talking. Come here. Come on. We were just talking. Good thing, good thing she didn't hear that. What's going on, Chris? Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Just come say hi right there. Just come say hi. Just say hi. Yeah, come come sit next to Rosie. Say hi. You look great. Come in there. Get in there, mama. Have a seat, boy. Get out. This is the wonderful Kim Osorio, yeah, legend, absolute you know, I, legend, I, I um, and thank you for, for pulling up at the last. As we're talking about um, let's yo, let's yo, the homeless, yo, let's yeah, I got this. Yeah, let, 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 let me go to the bathroom. No, 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 no. I have to go to the bathroom so bad. Let me finish. Let me finish. I'm glad. I'm glad that. I'm glad that you. We ended on that note because, like I said. Everyone, a lot of people are gonna tune in. Probably want to list like some, some, some bad boy stories or whatever. But what you're doing with paid meals, yeah. what you're doing with being able to go do your time, come out, and not think, oh, I want to get back in the mix and do yeah, that. Yeah, that yeah, like yeah. you're really putting your time and your effort and your thoughts and your your ingenuity I into an it. app you're facilitating that it in truly a way helps that, people. Yeah, exactly. I appreciate it. Appreciate you can't you can't do nothing better than that. So, yeah, so, so yeah. thank you so much. Check out my gold fund. You know, what I'm saying. Trying to raise funds to um, build the paid meals 2.0 mobile application. Yeah. Yes, sir. We gonna put the we gonna put the link yeah, right the in link. there. Yeah, definitely. And, and, even, and, and even if you know you don't have anything to contribute, you know, just share the link. Spread the word. Spread the word. And and, and before we get out of here, we gotta make sure that Kim Kim. He really gave you the flowers, and he yes. really gave you that. <laughs> not the ones on your sandals. Yeah, not the ones on your sandals. <laughs> 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 but, but him, like, you helping him facilitate and articulate and get back into a vulnerable space where he can have these conversations and he can be comfortable talking about his past and what he's going through. So and help out with the book. Yeah, and the book. And the book. Want, oh, he told yeah. you about the book? Talk about the book. Yeah. 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 So we want to make sure Kim got her flowers. But, Loom, man, thank you guys. appreciate you for Thank you so much, Loom. Appreciate you coming back. Friend and family of the show. Wow, this is two, yeah, two, two, two time guests. Look, look, this is great. Lo can lo learn something from Loon because look how he still got his waves. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck is so funny. <laughs> look how Loon kept his waves. I, bro. I, I <laughs> shaved my. <laughs> he kept his waves. Yo, close the, the ball. No, is nice. beautiful. Thank low. you. Like that, the oh, ball is beautiful. That's like, you. I, I always had the ball. You had the ball. It's not low. I've never seen you. Not low like that. Talked about this. Yo, you started this. No, I was. We was doing the running man. He's doing the moonwalk. <laughs> we was going this way. Right, right. I was trying I was to try power the ball okay. head. You know what oh, I'm saying? Oh, I'm Thank you so much, Lou. Nah, Thank, Thank you, Kim. Thanks, everybody, for pulling up. Oh, Make sure you subscribe. YouTube.com slash Kazim. Uh, say less on Snapchat, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, wherever it is. And um, 
No battle this week. Next but week, it'll make yeah, you, we'll, we'll come it'll back make next you, week. It'll make you be thirsty for one we'll next week. We'll come back so next week. Appreciate y'all, Loon. Yeah, thank definitely. you, Kim. Thank you. And love Kim. And, uh, love you, Kim. Like we always do with this time. love you, brother, man. Just come say hi real quick. Just yeah, come, come say, say, come say, say hi real quick. Come say what's up, CGF. Just come, see, just, come, come brother. say hi. No, come on, there you go. There you go. This is, this is. Hey, so you can sit. Nah, just no, sit right there. Just sit right there for it. There you go. There it is. That's that's one of our best friends right there. Chris and Graham. Legendary. Legendary. Creative NFS. All things. Man, that's that's the guy right. What is that? Lambskin? Nice. <laughs> <laughs> what? How do we? How do we end this off? Like guys? we always do with this yeah, time. Uh, stay free. Yes. Stay safe. Yes. And always say less. Yes. We'll see you next week. Peace. Aww.